These are people who sense the threat, who understand what this means on a local level, and get organized. So I get to LaGuardia um, 4.30 in the morning for a 6 a.m. flight. And if you really want to indulge your misanthropy and truly hate everyone on the planet, arrive at LaGuardia Airport in New York City at 4.30 in the morning. Everyone just sounds like a demon. Everybody's super happy or they're super sad, but you're just like, Rrr. you know, and you're in the airport. You're about to fly hurtling through space at 600 miles an hour, 30,000 feet in the air. And so, of course, you get there, and then in the lobby, or the, what do you call it, the uh, gate, is blaring at 5 o'clock in the morning at super volume, CNN. Now, CNN at 5 in the morning has the extra chipper, like, morning hair flip anchor crew who are trying to get ahead in the world of anchordom. So everything is like, you know, pessimism, yeah! You know, like, they're all, like, turned up, like, another tweaking so they're trying to be like the best possible anchor so they can get it. So they don't have to continue to get up at four in the morning to do their job. They can be like, you know, promoted. So they're just like nails on a blackboard, the sound of these people's voices. And the men and the women are doing this hair flip and stuff, not just the women. So then you, you, the whole news slate um, is uh, really interesting that morning that I had to do this. Number one was flash floods in Utah, which killed... 12 people. Their cars, flash floods, cars just disappeared. Nobody knew where they went, disappeared, floods came. Very terrible. Disappeared these cars. Next story, wildfires in California. Incredible footage of people like driving down like, you know, race car through burning forests on either side of the car and praying that the, the trees didn't fall into the road to kill them and they're praying and you can hear them. It's incredibly dramatic footage of these wildfires in California. Third story, refugee crisis in Europe. Syrians and people from all over the Middle East are flooding through Europe. The, the, the camera woman who kicked the refugee, and this was a big story. And number four, the second Republican debate. So this was the whole morning slate on CNN. There are two words which bind all four of those stories together. And CNN failed to mention them. You know what they are. Family, hey, climate change. Right, wildfires in California, climate change. Flash floods in Utah, climate change. The Syrian civil war was started because of a five-year drought, an unprecedented drought in Syria. All the farmers' crops failed throughout the entire country. The authoritarian Assad regime decided only to give aid to their friends. There were protests in the city square. Those protests were met with repressive brutality, putting people in jail, torturing them. More protests happen, and pretty soon you have the world's first climate change-induced civil war. Climate change being a huge problem in the Mideast because of temperatures and drought. Increasing all of the things that are happening there now. Many people talk about the rise of ISIS as something having to do with climate change. But we know that Syria, that civil war, was started by climatic instability. And of course, number five, the Republican national debate, the very first time that all the candidates were asked about climate change and they denied that it existed. <laughs> they didn't mention that in, the, in that part on CNN. They talked predominantly about whether or not Donald Trump thought Carly Fiorina you know, was hot. So that was the morning slate. The architecture of denial. They didn't say climate change doesn't exist. They didn't come out and say, you know, but it was the pillars holding up the building. It was the bottom line. I mean, how could you call this news without context? Without understanding what it is we're talking about. So this, to me, is part of that attack. It's not simply attacking it, but it's also like failure to mention. How many of you knew that the Syrian civil war was started by climate change? Yeah, I didn't know until... You know, but I'm a person who's doing a movie on climate change. You have to really keep your ear to the ground. Because it's not, it should be on every, every channel. America is a place where science and the facts are perpetually under attack. By the political interests who would rather have you not be involved politically. 
Gasoline is constantly being attacked by the oil and gas industry. Climate change is constantly being attacked by the oil and gas industry. The climate thing is completely different. Climate is so huge and so we're so late to the party. Um, we're going to see a lot of the most difficult and negative aspects of climate change in your guys' lifetime. The idea, though, that uh, we're going to fix it um, is not one that I think I understand, I think is possible. I think what we have to do is endure it and, and make it not as bad as it could be. And in order to understand the way to act is a fundamental inquiry into human beings. Um, what do we want to be as we enter the most difficult and turbulent chapter of our history? Do we want to have greed and competition continue to rule our value structure, which it does now, or does something else want to take its place? Like community and generosity and, and resilience and peace and uh, justice um, and courage. Are those the things that we have to look to? I think those are the things we have to start to develop at a local level, um, and that's possible to do as we develop solar and wind. You know, to me, what's more important is community resilience. If you ask Bill McKibben, where do we move <laughs> in the face of climate change? His answer is anywhere there's a strong community. And that's the important thing to build out.